How is it possible that the longest continually operating horse show in America is here in the small mountain town of Bowling Rock, North Carolina? Seems improbable, doesn't it? Yet this year we are celebrating the centennial of the Bowling Rock Charity Horse Show. Now you have to put this in context because the Bowling Rock we know today was not at all the Bowling Rock of the turn of the century, out scrolling all the way forward to the 1960s. Uh, we are now a year-round resort, but back in the day, you know, I remember growing up here in Bowling Rock, uh, the season was essentially June through August. And by Labor Day, everything had shut down, except for the occasional leaf watcher. And so it's a very different environment. So as we celebrate this centennial, this remarkable accomplishment, I want to identify some of the men and women, I consider them the heroes of the Bull and Rock Horse Show, who have made this incredible accomplishment possible. Uh, against all odds, these men and women have worked to keep this one of the most popular horse shows in the entire United States of America. These are people who established and reinforced the idea of a small, family-oriented, fun event where old friends could congregate and, of course, compete, and also new friendships flourish. As we identify those Blowing Rock Horse Show heroes who rose up against insurmountable odds, let's remember together the one true hero, the beautiful, graceful, powerful, and soulful horse. You know I've said it before, and I'll repeat it here. The beautiful horse steals our heart every time. Now let's go back in time together to the 1920s, when there were two separate towns, Green Park and Blowing Rock, Blowing Rock including Mayview. It's safe to say there was an intense rivalry between the two when it came to horses and the equestrian life in our town. One of the earliest heroes of the Blowing Rock Horse Show was C.V. Henkel of Statesville. He was one of the early owners of the Green Park Hotel and the Blowing Rock Development Company. It just so happens that he was also an accomplished equestrian who, at the turn of the century, helped organize the forerunner of today's horse show it was called the Tournament at Green Park. In the 1920s, in celebration of this friendly rivalry between Green Park and Blowing Rock, there was an organized horse race from the Green Park Hotel all the way down to the village of Blowing Rock and back to the Green Park Hotel. Just imagine, if you will, the scene of horses racing down Main Street and I guess it was to the delight and, and maybe to the horror of villagers. Now, when Moses and Bertha Cohn acquired over 3,500 acres near the village of Blowing Rock, which we know today as the Cohn Estate, they built over 25 miles of carriage roads and horse trails. Fortunately, Bertha Cohn invited the public to experience the Cohn Estate. And the best way to do that was on horseback or in a horse-drawn carriage. This led to the growth of Blowing Rock as an equestrian community and the establishment of our very first livery stables. There is no doubt that, perhaps indirectly, Moses and Bertha Cohn were also early heroes of what became the Blowing Rock Horse Show. When Lloyd M. Tate came to Blowing Rock from Pinehurst to operate a livery stable, he advanced equestrian sports and began the first official Blowing Rock horse show in 1923 on what is now Green Hill Circle. Lloyd Tate is certainly the foremost hero of the Blowing Rock horse show. He and his family, his wife Anna, children Marianne, Billy, and of course LP Junebug Tate were instrumental in nurturing the horse show through recessions 
depressions, gas rationing during the World War II, and many, many other challenges. In 1934, Tom Broahill, then owner of the majestic Mayview Manor Hotel, donated to the Blowing Rock Horse Show a piece of land near the hotel that charlatan Walter Alexander originally intended to be a golf course. That bucolic land is the current site of the show ring of the Blowing Rock Charity Horse Show. During the 1940s, charlatan Luther Snyder of Coca-Cola fame was the honorary director and president of the Blowing Rock Horse Show. The youngest of 11 children, Luther grew up on a farm in the heart of the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. He was a very successful businessman, but ultimately his philanthropy overshadowed his success in the soft drink business. A lover of horses and an avid equestrian, Snyder helped guide the Blowing Rock Horse Show through, I would say, some of its most difficult years. To this day, in his honor, the Snyder Trophy is given to the best rider under 14 years of age. You know, perhaps one of the most loved horse show heroes embraced the simple title of volunteer. But I don't think anyone worked harder or loved the horse show more than Blowing Rock resident John Walt Gregg. He's someone that I remember so well, as do many of us who grew up in Blowing Rock, and he is certainly one of the iconic characters of the horse show. Look at this striking figure. It's civic leader Annie Ludlow Cannon on her beautiful horse, Silver Slippers. In this image, she is preparing to ride in a town parade in 1942. As a member of the Blowing Rock Horse Show Board, she was a force for good and her reputation encouraged other prominent individuals to join her in supporting the horse show. This included Ruth and Charles Cannon, who were also prominent members of the horse show board. When Ann Reynolds, heiress of RJR tobacco fame, married Lloyd P. Junebug Tate, son of the founder of the Blowing Rock Horse Show, the horse show had one of America's wealthiest women on the board. For much of her life, Ann loved and owned thoroughbred horses, and she was a staunch supporter of the Blowing Rock Horse Show. As we scroll forward to more contemporary times, the individual most identified with the Blowing Rock Charity Horse Show, certainly by the larger community, is the late Maurice Ewing. He was ringmaster of the saddlebred, saddlebred portion of the horse show for more than 50 years. Now for over three decades, Burr Collier has served skillfully as president of the Blowing Rock Charity Horse Show and later the Blowing Rock Charity Horse Show Foundation. During those decades, he has been assisted by board directors Lynn Aaron Buxton, Sally Bush Wheeler and husband Kenny Wheeler, Rita Wiseman, John and Beth Van, Caroline Clark, Sam Craver, Susan Whittington, and many, many others. I would be remiss if I did not recognize another of the Blowing Rock Charity Horse Show heroes. The critical, often behind the scenes role of the Blowing Rock Rotary Club and their contribution to 100 years of continuous operation. You know, members of the Rotary are responsible for annual program advertising, gate admissions, and distributing financial awards to community organizations. In just the last decade, the Rotary is responsible for over $200,000 of support. In 1928, the horse show was moved to its current beautiful location, the Bucolic Broyhill Equestrian Preserve in Mayview. You know, this is a place of true distinction. 
because the Blowing Rock Charity Horse Show is the longest continuously running horse show in the United States. It has been honored as one of only 20 heritage horse shows in America. It was recently voted one of America's top 10 horse shows and as the newest addition to the National Show Hunter Hall of Fame. The peak of the summer social season is the horse show with its parties and pageantry. Here, the glories of Blowing Rock before air conditioning can be recaptured. For many years, the Blowing Rock Fashion Show was held in connection with the horse show at the beautiful and exclusive Mayview Manor Hotel. This charity event attracted Blowing Rock's social elite and raised funds for many worthy causes, including the Blowing Rock Hospital. Blowing Rock has always had a love affair with horses. You know, they're such soulful creatures. This is my buddy, Bo and he steals my heart every time. You know, this special relationship between horses and Blowing Rock, it dates all the way back before the turn of the century. Today, the economic impact of the Blowing Rock Horse Show is over $7 million annually. Competitors, owners, staff, they come, they rent accommodations, they spend money in our community, and they make such a tremendous impact. By the way, during the horse show, good luck going out to dinner because you cannot get a reservation anywhere. You know, in many ways, the Blowing Rock Charity Horse Show is truly a family affair. Generations of riders, trainers, owners, exhibitors, participants of all type, they come to this horse show year after year. They keep coming back because the soul of the horse show is small town friendly, Blowing Rock style. You know, as I stand here today, looking out at dozens of acres of the beautiful bucolic Royal Hill Equestrian Preserve, I am reminded that this truly is hallowed ground. Over the years, this space has been many things to many, many people. A golf course, campground, baseball diamond, polo and jumping grounds. It has also been a place of quiet reflection, of eternal beauty among the white pines, rhododendron, and laurel thickets of the Southern Appalachians. If one listens closely, you can hear the neighing and galloping of horses, the creaking of old stall doors, and the laughter of friends reunited. This unique place is also forever joined at the hip with the contiguous and majestic Moses Cone Estate and the horse and carriage trails in the estate. Caring for this place is a sacred trust and a daunting challenge for the members of the Blowing Rock Charity Horse Show Foundation. With over 460 stalls, schooling and showgrounds, grandstands, and vendor shops, trails and roadways, fields for grazing and turnout, and of course part-time staff and volunteers, there is a constant need for maintenance and improvements. It's for this reason that the Blowing Rock Charity Horse Show Foundation has initiated the Centennial Capital Campaign to improve footing, 
replace barns, renovate historic facilities, beautify landscaping, and establish an endowment to assure the future well-being of the Burrow Hill Equestrian Preserve. This is the vision and hope of the Foundation, to assure the next 100 years of the Blowing Rock Charity Horse Show. Hey, now let's celebrate together. Let's celebrate 100 years of the Blowing Rock Charity Horse Show, this incredible centennial that we're so proud of. Let's remember all the joy and the happiness and the togetherness that this event brings. Let's remember friendships both new and renewed. It's such a special time. And along the way, against all odds, the heroes of this horse show, the men and women, all of whom are so special, let's remember what they have accomplished. And as a community, we give thanks for this event and all it means to Blowing Rock, North Carolina. Thank you so much.